Mr. Bucky, let me see your manager. Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. What it is. Yeah, we talking sports shot out in Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't you no know chance what I mean. You see my so YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I don't even know how we got to this point, man. It just like Oh boy, we talked about how with Lamar Jackson, we've been talking about it from the jump with how Lamar Jackson, nothing he ever does will ever be good enough. He could win six Super Bowls. Somebody going to say, well, he needs to win six more. He could win 12 MVPs. Well, somebody say, well, that's not good enough, buddy. It's always going to be something. And it seems like it's an annual thing. Where somebody's got to say something outlandish. Maybe Bucky Brooks got an album coming out or something. I don't know. But somebody's got to say something just that's wild. That just absolutely does not make any sense whatsoever for the Baltimore Ravens. In regards to Lamar Jackson. And I just, I don't understand it. Last year it was that Lamar Jackson is a poor man's Taysom Hill. Y'all remember that? I do. I certainly do. But it's just, I don't get it. Shout out to Angie, because she was the first one that brought this to my attention uh, a few days ago, uh, because she was listening um, to what was NFL Network, I believe, and she said, did I just hear you right? And she tagged Bucky, too. She said, oh, yeah, I'm letting Bucky know this one. She said, did I just hear you right? I would be sick. Blah. And I think we all would be if that were to happen. But what he said... Let's just let, let's read the quote uh, exactly what he said word for word. He said in Harbaugh's words, uh, he said, we are the army of the NFL. Um, I just wonder about a scenario if Justin Fields happened to fall low enough where he is within range. If the Baltimore Ravens decide to really go all in on this army approach, meaning they take a collegiate approach to the uh, quarterback position, they cash in on a blue chip. They take Justin Fields, and then maybe they operate like a college team. One quarterback graduates, the other quarterback steps in to the starter's role. So, you, like, <clears throat> I just, what? No, this ain't college. And if the Ravens are trying to get to the next level, if they trying to upgrade the offense, if they brought in uh, T. Martin and Keith Williams, they retain Greg Roman now, but they brought in a T. Martin and Keith Williams. They brought in Sammy Watkins, who's very familiar with Greg Roman's system. And why would they go backwards to an Army style, to a collegiate type of offense? Why would they do that? And now they not only have one, but two first round draft, two first round draft picks. Well, we do expect them to trade back and probably acquire a bunch more draft picks. But right now they have two first round draft picks. Why in the world would the Ravens, who have Lamar Jackson, who just won the MVP just two years ago? Two years ago. And last season was a down season for him. But it was, what, his second season started? Why would they go all the way back to... Uh, army type of offense And why would they use a first round draft pick On a quarterback Now if Justin Fields Failed to like The 6th or 7th round Okay he could possibly be a backup But even then you still got Tyler Huntley And, and you got uh, You got Trace McSorley It's like what let's, let's go to what else he said he said, you now have the opportunity to keep a starting quarterback potentially on a young deal. Build up the rest of the assets, play smash mouth football the way that they play, and continue to build a better team around the quarterback. Something to think about. No, it's nothing to think about. There's nothing to think about with this whatsoever. Nothing. This, this thought, I don't even know how this thought came to his mind. But no, this is not anything to ponder over, nothing to consider, nothing to sit up here and be like, hmm, well, maybe this could be a good idea. No, it's not a good idea. It's not. I understand the part about the contract. Because if Lamar Jackson, if you drafted a quarterback, then Lamar Jackson will move on and you will be able to keep 
you wouldn't have to pay a quarterback that quarterback money because your new quarterback would be on his rookie deal. Lamar Jackson would be on a new team. But no, no. Lamar Jackson has proven that he is an NFL quarterback. These guys coming out of college, I'm sure they're going to be fine, but they are not proven yet. And yeah, football is about taking some risks sometimes. But if you're a team that has that had just struggled for so long to find a franchise quarterback, then you finally got one. You finally got one in Joe Flacco. And that went good. Won a Super Bowl and all that good stuff. Great. So then you moved on from him, and now you found another one. You found another one on your very first shot after Flacco. And it's been working out for you in a wonderful way. He has completely just changed the dynamic of the Baltimore Ravens. Why would you do this? Why would you run the risk at, at, at this position specifically? If you were talking a running back, receiver, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, uh, cornerback, safety, whatever, pat, whatever. If you were talking so many other positions, you may have something here to where the Ravens wouldn't want to pay all that money, invest all that money into one guy at that one position. You may have something here, but the fact that you're talking about the quarterback position and not just any quarterback, you're talking about Lamar Jackson and everything that he has done for these Baltimore Ravens. In the regular season, this guy has lost a total of one, two, and four games. He's lost seven games in a regular season. Seven. That is insane. And for you to even have the thought, the consideration, well, maybe the Ravens, they should take a quarterback in the first round of the draft if he drops lower. No. No. And no. Mm -mm. Nothing should, there, there's no reason they should even consider that. And what what I was thinking, I was thinking, well, maybe, um, maybe he... Maybe he might back off of them comments. Maybe he might be like, you know what? Now, nah, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. But no, he went on Twitter and he doubled down on it. He doubled down on it. He said, the Ravens are the one team that could utilize this approach because they're systematic on offense. They're like Army, so they can plug and play with a dynamic dual-threaded quarterback with similar success. No disrespect to number eight, but college supplies plenty of quarterbacks that fit the bill. So he doubled down on it. And no, we have already seen this is not a plug and play offense. And it's no offense to our guys, Tyler Huntley. It's no offense to our guys, Trace McSorley. We love both of them. But we've seen this is not a plug and play offense. They tried calling some of them Lamar Jackson plays with Trace, with Tyler, and it don't hit the same. It really doesn't. And then he talked about how it's cost effective and it enables the Ravens to keep a five star cast in place on both sides of the ball. I'm not saying that they will do it, but some teams should explore utilizing a collegiate model at quarterback. Unless you have an elite quarterback, let him graduate and find another. So that was his way of saying Lamar Jackson is not uh, an elite quarterback. And then he went and he tripled down. Well, he actually quadrupled down. He said, don't overpay for average performance and production. It comes back to bite in the end, food for thought. So we, we clearly see that uh, Bucky Book, Brooks, is he's not a fan of Lamar Jackson. And not that he has to be a fan. I, we don't care about that. But it just seems like that with this is almost disrespectful. It's almost disrespectful and it's almost like you're discrediting everything that Lamar Jackson has done for the Ravens again and, and, and then Lamar Jackson's personal QB coach Joshua Harris he he chimed in and and I was glad that he did because he obviously knows Lamar Jackson and he is extremely familiar with the Baltimore Ravens since I mean Lamar Jackson is kind of the Ravens quarterback but he said how quickly we forget where the organization was heading before number eight Lamar Jackson took over hint it wasn't the playoffs, and it certainly wasn't. They were four and five. The team was absolutely lifeless, lifeless. They were headed down a very, very uh, ugly path. It was going to be dis a disgusting season. 
We already knew. We could tell. But insert Lamar Jackson, insert life to the team. So, Bucky Brooks, I just, I can't get with this one, man. I have heard you. I've listened to you speak so many times, and you make some excellent points and a lot of commentary that you've done over the years. And everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I got no problem with that. But this one just, this ain't the one right here, my friend. This is not the one. I understand what you're talking about with the money. Ravens can save that bread. But no. No. You don't give up a Lamar Jackson just to save a little pocket money. You don't give away a Lamar Jackson to bring in a rookie just to save a little on the cash flow. You don't do that. Especially for what he's done for this team. Team, keep it clean. <laughs> this was just... <laughs> Why did he really, he really said, he really said it and he doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on it too. We out, man.